Okay, kids, get out your construction paper. We're going to make some nice macaroni artworks for your parents today, okay? Um, said nobody ever in Minnesota, apparently. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, hey, look at this. We're, da, you know, what are we doing? We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get, we're, we're gonna get to some, some airbrushing. A little shadow coating going on here. So, just in case anyone's not aware, um, I don't have the turret bolted down to the upper hull. The upper hull is not bolted to the lower hull so that we could paint this thing in stages. We already did the lower hull and road wheels and sprockets and such and return up rollers, idlers, etc. Uh, in a uh, natal black shadow coat. We're going to do the same to this. Um, it to me is gray primer sticks to aluminum about as well as to me as normal flat paint sticks to aluminium and I used some of that weird green sh stuff um, from the marine store on the lower chassis tub and it's very sticky, it's very smelly, it takes very long to dry and I'm fairly dainty with my tanks so I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint her whatever, it is what it is uh, she'll be fine I gotta pull the barrel out as far as I can. Sometimes it stays and sometimes it falls in. Um, and I'm gonna do that so this way, you know, I can flip this guy upside down, get a good shadow coat around this guy. I'll tuck all the electronics in here. I may even just tape this, tape this shut. I don't know. We'll see. But I, I want to get a good shadow coat on everything. So we're gonna go ahead and get that started now. And uh, yeah, no stories, no stories. I'm I'm so mentally fried right now, I don't even want to tell a story. I just want to paint and ignore reality entirely. So, let's do this, guys. BRB. So, uh, the home that me and my wife and the two cats and the dog... I'm sorry. Me and my wife and Matzo Ball and Frankie and Groot the Bulldog share... Um, it has a red front door. It's it's more of a burgundy. But uh, it is still red. And my wife goes, Honey, I want to paint the front door black. And I said, So honey, so you see a red door and you want to paint it black? And she goes, Yeah, I see the red front door and I want to paint it black. You guys know where I'm going here. I like music. I'm big. I, I, I throw on I throw on the stones. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. And it is now my wife's official theme song. At least as far as I'm concerned, it is. So anytime she mentions painting anything in the house, which which happens, eh, you know, with fairly uh, decent regularity, as most women do, they they want things their way. They, they want things painted their colors. They want they want to nest. It doesn't. They don't have to be pregnant. They just want to have their home their way. And uh, you know, I'm sitting down here and I'm just painting this whole thing black. And I go, I see a green tank and I want to paint it black. And I was painting my Japanese Type 10, and I had it in a full shadow coat of all NATO black. And I was like. Why the hell don't we just paint tanks black? I mean, this is cool. I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of our combat recently has been in, you know, desert e, you know, tactical tan conditions under, you know, a lot of sunlight. That tank would turn into quite the little easy bake oven if we just... But, but damn, damn, a modern battle tank. Or, I don't know, probably any tank. I mean, they look damn good in just straight up NATO black. It's just really not bad. So, oh yeah, she's nice. Um, so we've got our shadow coat on the upper hull and the turret. I did the underside as well, if you'd like to see it. Yeah, it's dry. It's dry. Uh, you know, we did our best to, to, you know, get everything underneath we need to get. Um, you know, again, you know, if people don't see it, you really kind of don't need to paint it, so to speak. But, I try to just, you know, be as thorough as reasonably possible. Um, Dan Gurney, something about race suspension, as soft as possible, as firm as necessary. 
as painted as possible, no, no, as unpainted as possible, as painted as necessary, to make it look good in 99% of situations. Uh, I, I did flip out the armor wings, and I painted in here. So, yes, it is, it is painted. Um, the photo etch baskets just keep looking better when you paint them. <clears throat> I mean, once you, oh my gosh, what did I, did I already chip, I already chipped a little paint off right here. Whatever, it's going to cover with more paint. Um, but yeah, that's, that's coming out a treat so far. Uh, time for a highlight coat next. And once I start filling this paintbrush with flat white to do the highlight coat, I'm going to break out the, the lower chassis and we'll get highlight coats on that too. After that comes the final top coat of colors, or color, uh, yeah, <laughs> Easter eggs. Um, and, you know, then we'll start making some progress here. But, uh, yeah, we're getting... We're, I mean, we went from me never seeing the end of the tunnel to me having to paint the end of the tunnel before I'm allowed to drive through it, which is fine with me. This is a really, really cool tank so far. I mean, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, you know, they just built their M551 Sheridan. I'll be honest... Out of all the tanks I built, um, it was a little fiddly, but it was definitely, hmm, <sighs> you know, memories get fuzzy with time. The first tank I ever built <clears throat> was the Tamiya M51 Super Sherman, and that was the first tank I ever built. And I've built complex Tamiya vehicles before that. Uh, I built I built my King Hauler, uh, tractor trailer, and, uh... That was fairly difficult, but comparatively, the M26 Pershing was harder. It was a yeah, you know that turret rotation, if anyone has an M26 from Tamiya, you know you really have to stuff any, everything in just right or else the you know gears will skip and the, the, uh, you're going to have problems. Uh, that, was, that was a little fiddly to build. And then after that, what well, was dismantling and putting back together... Partially, my to me a Tiger One that I bought already made, but I had to repair it and upgrade it. And after that, I mean, really, between the Japanese Type Ten and the M1 Abrams, ugh, I think the Type Ten was pretty damn hard to build. This guy um, would have been easier to build <clears throat> had I done full to me a box stock like I did with the Japanese Type 10. Other than, I always add ball bearings. Don't even, that's not even part of the equation. Um, this was a difficult tank to build. The fiber optics were very hard. Um, but I ran into some different issues with the Type 10, with the with the whole muzzle assembly, and there's, there's, there's a lack of indexing, and I was able to crazy glue something in crooked, which I didn't find out until... Um, a very similar front end like this didn't line up at all, and I was like, oh, crap, time to steal the nail polish remover. Um, so, yeah, the, the Abrams, the Abrams, was, that was pretty damn straightforward. There was really no points where I was just like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Type 10, yeah. I would, aside from the fiber optics in this tank, which were... A legitimate nightmare, and everybody agrees. Then fiber optics are a nightmare. Aside from the fiber optics, the Japanese Type 10 was actually harder to build than this tank, I believe, overall. Um, the 551 Sheridan, on the other hand, yeah, some of the springs were a little fiddly, and there was a couple things that were, like, not clear, and the instructions that, you know, whatever I figured out. But uh, if Andy really wants a challenge... Andy's Hobby Headquarters, you build yourself one of these with the fiber optics, or you build yourself a Type 10 Japanese tank. I think, I don't know, the fiber optics in this thing might outweigh the difficulty of building any other tank to me has ever made. This thing's fiber optics are a freaking nightmare by anybody's standards, not just mine. No one will disagree with me, uh, because everybody basically told me, oh, enjoy the fiber optics, douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, highlight coat, and then 
that'll be the end of this part. And then we will get to final paint coat and some stowage and accessories. We got that MG3 hidden now under my craft paper to protect what's left of my stainless steel workbench from getting painted like it's at Earl Scheib. Uh, for anyone that doesn't get that joke, um, uh, uh, Amco, double A, MCO. That's another one similar to Earl Scheib. But, uh, yeah, if you... Did I paint my toe hooks in place? No, nope, they still move. Yep, okay, they're fine. This one's just a little stiff. Again, some of these aftermarket parts, you know, they're they're a, a toy fit. Toy. You know, a sh smoking a waffle, pipe and a crepe, uh, blunt and a blintz, uh, something like that. Austin Powers reference. Okay, uh, I'll be right. Uh, I'll be yeah. I'll be right back with a highlight coat, and I may fill in and actually show you doing some highlight coat. But I mean, Andy and other people have covered the you know the highlight coats, but I, I I may just patronize you, showing you me airbrushing for some stupid reason, like you don't already have 500,000 better people on YouTube to watch for airbrushing lessons. BRB. Hey, howdy, y'all. Um, I, I live in Georgia now. <clears throat> We're supposed to say that once in a while, apparently. Um, it probably sounded very patronizing for all the truth of the Southerners. But either way, it's Friday the 13th, so I figured what better thing to do let me partake in an activity where absolutely nothing could ever go wrong. Because it's Friday the 13th, right? Exactly. Uh, so we're going to start We're gonna start uh, doing highlight coat on the tanky here. And uh, I'm sorry, Hans. It does have a name. It's Hans. You know what Hans's favorite number is? Nine. There we go. Everyone was waiting for that joke. And if you weren't, then you're not corny enough. Um, but yeah, we, we've got our... Uh, yeah, we've got our crap lot of fake... Uh, Little little guy going, and I'm gonna take the Andy method. You know, kind of. You don't have to be exact with this. It's just hit the areas that would naturally get a little weathered. I'm actually starting to get halfway not crappy with the airbrush. I'm pretty pleased most of the time these days when I'm. I'm still gonna paint both of these when I get my replacement photo etch in from Germany, from the fatherland, I think they call it, I'm going to, uh, obviously replace that dodgy, the dodgy adjustment there, it's just, oh, God, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, actually, this is kind of under the turret a little, it doesn't really get much sun, kind of like me. Ah, so yeah, you know, you get the general approach here. We do this, and then as we go over things, these pop and pop, and we got we got pop. We want pop. We want Britney Spears all over this tank. Um, so I'm going to do this, uh, you know, and uh, talk to myself so you don't have to listen to me babble. And I, I will be right back. Wait a sec. That's not a Leopard 2. That's, that's a Henglong M1A2. Um... Yeah, Friday the 13th is struck. I forgot, the last time I used this uh, flat white Tamiya to do my highlight coat, I over-thinned it. So I relabeled it from T to 2T for too damn thin. Um, it's, it was spritzing and spattering everywhere. And uh, I was bored, so I just figured, well, instead of pouring the paint out, let me just uh, make a clean slate. This is my test tank, guys. This is a cheaper, although slightly upgraded by Tygen, um hang long M1A2 Abrams and it's got the Tygen something or other some sort of upgrades it's got like a better gearbox in it or something I don't know um, but like I said I mean in my Abrams I bought this before I realized to me I actually had the Abrams out because I was always dying for an Abrams uh, it was always my favorite tank I grew up my informative very early teenage years I'm talking like 13 um, ish was Desert Storm. Guys, I went to summer camp wearing a t-shirt with an F-15 eagle on it that said, Know Your Enemy. I mean, I was a full Desert Storm fan. Not to mention, General Schwarzkopf and me 
share most of the same last name. So that was cool. Um, F-14s were still in service. Tomcats were still kicking butt. A-10 Warthogs destroying stuff with a brrrat, 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 you know, death from above. It was a great time to be a kid that thought military vehicles were cool. It was, it was peak military vehicle fandom for young children. Either way, I, I digressed somewhere. So yeah, this paint's too damn thin. I'm going to whip up a fresh can. Oh, with the new warning, this product can expose you to chemicals including carbon black, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer or birth defects or other reproductive harm. For more information, go to www.communifornia.ussr.dictatorship. Uh, Something like that is the website. It's a fine print, hard to read here. Um, yeah, Carbon Black? Really? Okay, sure, whatever. Whatever you want to say. Okay, California. As long as we can get our paint. We just started getting into me extra thin cement. We just started getting back airbrush cleaner, black panel liner. Luckily, I had enough that the, 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 the shortage, the X20A thinner, on the other hand, uh, this is homebrew. I had to make my own. I had to get some paint retarder and some alcohol and some uh, rubbing alcohol. I have plenty of regular alcohol, but uh, you can't thin paint with vodka, apparently. It, it's not recommended. I don't know. There's something with gumming up the airbrush. Um, yeah, otherwise, you know, a handle of Tito's is way cheaper than one and a half, 1.75 liters of this. I mean, 1.75 liters of this, this thing was like, yeah, this was 6.75 at Hobby Town for this little guy. 1.75 liters. How many? This is 250 milliliters, so that's a quarter of a liter. So it's seven dollars. Was that? Oh no, what? Was that eight seventy-five? How much did I pay for this truck? It's almost nine bucks for a quarter liter. A liter of cola. Yeah, nine, nine, eighteen, thirty-six. Thirty-six dollars a liter. So this stuff from Tamiya is priced similarly to upper middle end. Vodka. Interesting. Pretty similar. $30, $36 a liter. That's like uh, Grey Goose territory there. That's that's Belvedere. That's your, uh, your not quite Crystal Skull vodka, but yeah. This is equivalent to at least a Grey Goose or Belvedere vodka, price-wise. So I just made my own. It costs like literally, I don't know, a buck or less to make this bottle up. You know, because it's one of these guys, dirt cheap. And then uh, the paint retarder from Tamiya, eh, more expensive, but um, yeah, that's Mark Fit. That's uh, Mark Fit paint retarder. Yeah, paint retarder, 450 And you, this will make quite a few batches of uh, X20A along with your alcohol and uh, distilled whatever I used... Uh, I used water out of my Brita filter, I think. It, it, it's fine. Whatever. Either way, I had to get dump all the white paint out of here. So, so now I have something to play with at some point. Not that that white paint was a hint at all of what's happening here. Again, you guys have to watch the whole video and stay engaged. This is called viewer engagement. The YouTube studio gives me tips. Um, but either way, I gotta, I'm going to mix up from fresh, do the highlight coats on this, and we'll come back to see the turret and the upper hull, and maybe the lower hull, all highlight coated. BRB. Uh oh. I think, I think I might have, I might have gone a bit too heavy on that highlight coat. Uh. Um. Uh. Oh boy. Ew. Oh. You know what? I. It's really weird that this happened. I've been spending the last hour listening to, like, 35 different covers and remixes and instrumentals of Paint the Back Black by the Rolling Stones. And, oop, I got a little black left. Uh, and I ended up painting the entire tank white. Well, isn't that weird? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, oh, oh. What do we got here? Oh, 
What do we have here? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're doing a what-if tank. It's like episode 12 or 13. Yeah, if you haven't been... It, was, it wasn't even an Easter egg. I literally waved the decal sheet in the last episode at one point. Um, we know for a fact that uh, Germany was uh, putting uh, Leopard 1A4s into service with the United Nations. And now it seems the modern MBT being uh, donated service-wise to the UN is the French... Leclerc, Leclerc, if you're from New York City, Leclerc, Sorbet, Leclerc, Sorbet, Leclerc. There's two ways to say Sorbet. Um, I actually was training to be a chef, sort of, informally, so I'll say Sorbet, and I'll say Leclerc, or Leclerc, um, Leclerc, <laughs> it sounds funny. But yeah, so this is a what if Germany was still... You know, give it thanks to the UN for service. Um, we're going to do a Leopard 2, I see. And I think like Toro or Mato, one of the chinese brands of RC Tank, they did a UN paint scheme. They didn't put any UN logos on it because I'm assuming copyright infringement lawsuits from the United Nations are probably even worse than from Tamiya. So... Um, or from whoever manufactured the tanks they're building that probably aren't licensed. I mean, te technically, General Dynamics or Grumman or whoever, and Von Schweiger, Bronsfair, Bratwurst, could technically go and sue all these Chinese companies for making models of their main battle tank without their permission or licensing. Who knows? Maybe they have licensing. I don't know. Um, I know for a fact Tamiya always does things on the up and up, and they license everything, which is why sometimes we can't have things anymore. They take them away. So, you know, like, I have a Ford Lightning pickup truck. It's a very cool truck. And they made it for a while. And I actually had the RC version before I had the real version. And uh, then, the you know, the, war the licensing deal ran out. They stopped making them or whatever. And then they renewed it, and they made another run of them. And the same thing with the tanks, maybe. You know, I, I don't know what the... Is the tank... Uh, the property of the government that commissioned it or the manufacturer that made it for the government that commissioned it. I don't know. Uh, I had a good friend who was an intellectual property attorney. Rest in peace, buddy. Uh, he would have had some good words to say about this. I could have called him or texted him and gotten the right thing to say in the video. But either way, we're doing a United Nations What If Leopard 2A6. This is my first all-white tank. I feel it looks a little bit like a Japanese Gundam robot model almost now. So, um, I'm probably going to watch a few more videos on weathering Gundams and other white robotic type things from Japan. But until then, uh, I did plan ahead and I bought some gray Tamiya panel liner. Um, because I feel it'll probably go good. And if you saw before, the, uh, the M1 Abrams, I painted a quarter of it white just to practice what the effects of uh, of the panel liner is going to have on it, uh, chipping compounds, I may need to come up with a new color of chipping compound, etc., etc. I saw a video on YouTube, though, where, where you know, they were, they were getting these, well, they were getting French Leclerc 2s off the boat in whatever, uh, uh, well, what do they say? What's the military thing? The 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 uh, the region, the thing, the not the the theater, the theater of combat, or the theater of where they were being used. They were painting them in theater off the boat in the port, and they were basically just like taking off the stowage and taping things up, and spray painting these suckers just white, white, white. I looked up the RGB and the CMYK, and 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 the Pantone color codes for United Nations Blue and White. And for United Nations Blue, there's a very specific color code they have. And I may actually get a tiny jar of that mixed up over at my local Benjamin Moore. I don't go to Sherwin-Williams, because they're a bunch of friggin' crooks and scammers. But I love to support my local Sherwin-Williams dealer. Family businesses are key. Either way... 
I can get some UN Blue mixed up if I go in there with the Pantone RGB CMYK. I'm sure he could figure it out. But UN White, it literally just says white. White. That's it. There's no codes. It says 255, 255, 255. That's it. It means just pure white. So hopefully to me is, you know, flat white is just pure white. I'm assuming kind of, because it's Tamiya, it probably is just pure white. So either way, we painted this thing pure white. There's a little gradation here and there from the, the you know, the shadow and the highlight coats, and uh, it's really hard to really get full coverage over a darker base with this Tamiya flat white. And it's very difficult to thin out properly. I was playing around with all different amounts of thinner, and I basically, I still haven't figured it out. It looks fine. If you got into it with a jeweler's loop, it would look a little speckly here and there, maybe? I don't know. But it's pretty good. And, uh, you know, I have everything masked off that I should have masked off. And the machine gun tube, I may go back and, you know, paint that, you know, uh, metallic gray after the fact or whatever. But um, for now, we're good. She's white. <laughs> Very white. I mean, this thing's... This is a bride at the wedding here. So, um, that's it for now, guys. Next episode, we're gonna, I guess we're gonna button her up, we're gonna get the tracks on the lower, we're gonna feed all the electronics in, finish installing what we need to install, button her up, hit her with some clear to seal this up, um, and then, you know, uh, stowage, weathering, etc., we're, we're gonna, this is gonna be a fun one, guys, because... To be honest, I mean, I've seen, like I said, Chinese versions of a UN tank, which didn't even have UN markings. This is going to be the first uh, that I'm aware of, legit Tamiya 2A6, purebred, painted in NATO. I'm sorry, NATO. UN, white, um, with all the little decals and other things. I don't know if I'll make a flag or not. Eh, I don't like flying flags on the tank. It's just a little, I don't know, whatever. It is what it is. But, uh, oh, God. I really like this tank. It's it's a lovely little beastie. Um, yeah, that it's pretty sweet. I got it all underneath too. I painted I painted everywhere on this damn thing, um, it, except right right there. I need to just lift up that flap and hit that little area with a little little white. And I already cleaned my airbrush. So I'm not doing it tonight. Either way, guys, Ian. Sorry for the long episode. I filmed it over two days. Schwartz. Whatever. Happy Friday the 13th. I hear thunder outside. It's very ominous now. Either way, good night. I hope I see you next time. Take care, guys.